Hey guys, MC Stu here, and today we're going to talk about how to make a million plus EC in 20 minutes. Today we're going to talk about how to make EC quick and easy. Um, we're going to go over the two methods that I think are the most uh, easy for pretty much anybody in the game to be able to, to do on a daily basis uh, with the only caveat of having a level 65 character and uh, being in a fleet. Um, so the, the two items um, that we're going to discuss are Tour the Galaxy and also selling vendor trash. Um, so I'm going to go over the ship build um, that I use for Tour of the Galaxy and the, the ships that I recommend for, for doing that. And then in terms of the vendor trash, the patrol that I like to run, uh, how to go about kind of setting that up and the ship, uh, you know, setting up your ship to, uh, to do that effectively and where to sell that vendor trash. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it, uh, but first, if uh, you have not subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate if you hit that button and ring the bell. That helps me out quite a bit, and I'd really, really appreciate it. Uh, so first, let's take a look at the ship that I'm going to use. It is an Odyssey Tactical Star Cruiser. The one that I am using is a Tier 5X, so it's been upgraded with the X upgrade. And the reason I'm using this is because it has an advanced quantum slipstream drive. Uh, there's a number of ships in the game that have advanced drives, and this is really a must in order to complete Tour of the Galaxy uh, without it being ext extremely difficult. I don't know that I've ever been able to complete it in a ship that did not have an advanced drive. Um, so you, you're definitely going to want one of those. Let's take a look at the uh, the wiki page and, uh, and, and see which ships have those and, and which ones are, are the easy ones to get. Okay, I'll put a link for this uh, this page down in the description for you guys. This goes over some of the different ships and, and console sets that come from ships um, to improve your slipstream drive. And it also gives you, you know, just the basic information on basic drives. So your basic ship, a standard tier 6 ship or tier 5 ship is, that doesn't have an advanced drive, uh, the duration will be 30 seconds of that drive with a 2-minute cooldown. All of the ships have a two-minute cooldown except for Miracle Worker ships. On top of that, Miracle Worker ships have a 90-second, minute-and-a-half uh, slipstream time. This isn't as big of a deal because there are turns that you have to make, and rarely will you have a run between systems where it's going to take you that long at slipstream speed. Um, but having that 30-second cooldown instead of the two minutes is, is massive. So if you have a Miracle Worker ship, of any kind, that's what you're going to be using to run Tour of the Galaxy. Um, if you're a newer player or uh, a free-to-play player, the way to go is going to be this ship right here. This is the Odyssey Star Cruiser. This is the non-upgradable Tier 5 version of the ship I am using in this run. This comes from the ship vendor at the shipyard. And it is um, 200,000 fleet credits. Um, so it doesn't require any kind of money, any kind of tokens, or anything like that. If you're in a fleet, you're grinding out your, your fleet marks, get to that 200 mark, and you can go to the vendor and purchase this ship. The ship's not super great in terms of doing much else with it. Um, we'll just kind of talk about that real quick. I mean, it's a standard 4-4 setup, but the, tag, or the, the, the console layout is not real great or the overall number let's put it that way so it has a total of uh, nine console slots i have built it to play in advanced content you can do it and it's you know it's not bad i think the biggest issue for me is is the hull um it's hard to get that hull up to have enough survivability but anyways that's for a whole nother video um in any case this is a extremely inexpensive ship uh, that you can get without irl money you can get it just from grinding in the game. You should be able to earn that depending on how active your fleet is within a week or so. Maybe even less depending on the kind of grinding you're doing and the uh, the kind of um, uh, projects that are available for you to turn in fleet marks or dilithium. 
So this is what I would recommend for your, your free to play. Um, otherwise, uh, Miracle Worker ship is going to be the top end of that list. Um, so with, with that, with that ship's drive, that's going to double your duration of slipstream drive and, um, it'll still have that same two minute cooldown there. Let's talk about the items on the ship that are going to make it perform well in this instance. Uh, the gamma core is the only thing you really have to have. You can complete this with only having this core. This is from the Gamma Rep. And the nice thing on this is this becomes available after you complete just the Tier 1. It'll become available for you to, to get. Um, let's take a look at the cost on that. So this is going to be probably one of the more pricier things that you know, you'll have to kind of grind out for. It's not outrageous, but it's, uh, it's not super cheap. The EC is only 40k, which isn't bad. The dilithium is 32.5 thousand. So you're looking at minimum of four days to refine that much if you're starting from zero. Um, the germanium fragments, you're going to need five of those, which you'll get from advanced TFOs that are uh, gamma rep. And then you'll need 750 gamma marks. Um, you could grind out everything you need for this in a day, no problem. Um, it's just a matter of how much dilithium do you have that's already refined. You can refine 8,000 a day plus the 500 at your fleet. Um, so four days, five days, you, you could have enough to get that again if you're starting at zero. Uh, what this drive does is it gives us 60% slipstream speed. It also gives us 100% slipstream turn rate. And then lastly, it gives us 100% recharge time on slipstream. And again, with STO and their percentages, some of these don't make sense. To me, 100% means zero if I'm taking 100% of the, re uh, the recharge time off of something. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what that means. I, I think it, it translates into a minute um, cooldown time. Let me know in the comments. Um, I had the same question when it came to the Omega set that gave you negative 500 percent uh weapons power cost reduction um not sure what that means 100 percent to me means all of it right so 500 i don't know it sounds good so it can't be bad right but in any case if you <laughs> if you have an explanation for me on that i'm pretty curious to know what uh what that means exactly if we're talking 100 percent and it doesn't make the cooldown zero uh, but in any case that hits and checks all of the three boxes for, uh, for slipstream, so faster, um, turn rate better, and cooldown better. Um, so those are you know those are the things you're looking for um, when you're looking at tour of the galaxy and being able to build a ship performance for sl slipstream, you know, drive, turn rate, those kinds of things. The other item that I'm using on the ship is the Polaric mod uh, module module Polaric module, and it looks like it got unequipped. Let's throw that back on. And this has a, all of the stats on this have to do really with you know, piloting, quote unquote. So speed, turn rate, all of those kinds of things. The only one that matters for us here is it's going to give us 100% slipstream turn rate. So when you're at slipstream in sector space, your turn rate is insane. I mean, you're talking about, you know, doing a circle at full speed is going to take you like four systems you know, going around. Um, so anything we can do to add to that uh, really kind of helps that overall performance uh, as we're making our way from system to system. So those are the two items that I'm using. Again, you could get away with just using this. This is a free mission drop, the Polaric module uh, modulator uh, from Delta Flight in the Iconian arc. Um, so it's free. It's easy to get. It's a fun mission to play as well. Uh, so pick that up nice and easy. Uh, there are other consoles like from the Vespa. Um, there's some set consoles and you can get those if you're wanting to min max this. Uh, I know like when I was running it all the time, um, I was always trying to beat that last time record and stuff. So there's certainly more you can add to it. Another very good one is going to be in the rep system as well. Some of the other items you can use would be the assimilated impulse engine. Uh, this is going to give you uh, an, a higher warp factor so not slipstream but for the times that slipstream is on cooldown and you're uh you know recharging that if you can be moving faster at just regular warp um, this impulse engine is actually going to affect your warp speed 
Um, there are also some other things like I was reading on the, the wiki, the, uh, the Mako engine. Um, there's a modifier that will come up for this when it goes to ultra rare that'll also give you additional sector speed uh, skill bonus, basically, which also gives you a faster uh, warp travel speed. Um, so there's a lot of other little things that you can do that, that will add to the overall effectiveness of, of your, your Tour of the Galaxy build. Uh, but again, I just want to emphasize, you know, you can do it with just this engine. And so the reason I didn't build out a whole ship with all the different things to show off like best case scenario is because I really wanted to demonstrate what you can do with the bare minimum. And if I'm able to do this properly with with the bare minimum, you know, anybody, anybody can do it. And then there's a lot more you can add to that. Maybe, you know, I, I've ran this a lot. It has been a while. <laughs> we'll see how, how good it goes when I do it. Um, but there's many that haven't and, you know, ran it much or never. And so having some more of this equipment will will make it even easier for them to go ahead and complete it. Um, so that's the build for um, Tour of the Galaxy that I'm using. Essentially, it's Warp Core in this one console. Uh, let's take a look at how to pick that mission up. So you can pick the mission up from the guy over here. I don't recommend doing that because once you accept it, the timer starts. It has a 24 hour cooldown and it, um, so we're not going to, I'm on cooldown right now because uh, I ran it uh, earlier. It's going to be off for me here shortly. Um, but if you accept it here, that 15 minute timer starts and you need to get to where you need to be first in order to uh, be in position. Otherwise, what's going to happen is if I start it here and then I need to go to where I need to be to start the route, I'm going to lose a bunch of time and I'm not going to be able to to complete the run. What you'll want to do is you'll want to head over to where you're going to start this run and then you'll want to go into your mission logs here, go into available, scroll down, find that guy J, and you'll want to accept the mission and start it there. I'm not sure if it's going to be in my list because like I said, it's still on cooldown. Um, Jay Yin is his name. She'll just find him in the list, tour the galaxy, and you'll go ahead and, and accept that. Uh, once you accept it, that timer will start. So uh, make sure you're in position and are ready to immediately start the run after that so you can get the full time potential out of it. Let's take a look at the route we're going to take, and then uh, we'll go ahead and do the run. I'm just going to do that in fast motion because uh, it is a 15-minute run, and that would get pretty boring just watching that. Um, and I'll give you some pointers as we're looking at the map as well, how to complete this. Okay, so here is the route that I take. Um, so you can kind of follow along where that goes. I'll put a link to this map um, that I use. There are many other ones uh, that, that people use that are effective for them. This is just what I found works best for me. Um, so I start down here in the bottom right corner of the beta quadrant. Um, what you'll want to do is make sure you kind of start a little ways over from the star, just a little bit, because if you're right up on it when you start it and accept the mission, you'll have to actually reverse away from it and then re-enter that, that activation zone, if you will, to count for that. So start just a little, a little ways out. Uh, you're going to start that. I'll generally come out and I'll actually kind of cut this a little bit more. Once I line up, I'll use my slipstream to get me all the way up to about right here. Uh, depending on the turn, sometimes I'll have to kind of turn it off about right here and finish up the turn, get this straightened out. I'll take it all the way down here, slipstream again all the way up here. With the build that I'm currently having, I'm able to get almost over here. So make you know this whole run with one slipstream go. You will have to slow it down a bit as you're hitting this star. I do auto navigate most of it. Um, so you know, I'll make this turn, I'll click on this here, hit M again so the map comes up. And just as I'm about to approach it, I'm going to click the have the next star clicked and ready to hit OK. You'll want to hit OK just before you're getting into the range of that star. Otherwise, it'll stop you. Um, so you want to make sure you click it just before, but not too early because you don't want the course correction to pull you off and you miss the star and you have to turn back around. Um, so I'll bring it down through this bit here. Once I get to this one, I'll use the slipstream again to make this turn. That'll get me all the way to Drozana Station. We'll turn it off there. We'll come down to the bottom here, and then I will use the transwarp to jump up to Risa because it drops you into the sector space of Risa. Um, so immediately we'll start heading up north, use the slipstream until we get up to the top here, turn it off, and then turn into the alpha quadrant. Uh, regular speed as we come down and around, I'll kind of get it lined up, and then we'll use the slipstream to get us all the way over to here. 
Once you get over here, you will get a little pop-up you'll need to be watching for. So what I would do is turn off your slipstream right before you get there, because uh, that pop-up's gonna come up and you'll need to click it. Um, I'm not sure what it says, actually, I've never really paid attention, it just gets in the way. But if your slipstream's on, you'll end up kind of grinding down the map here and getting out of position. So turn your slipstream off right before you get here. Um, and then as you're getting into range, you'll be tagging the star. You'll click that little pop-up that comes up, make that turn. You're gonna use just warp to get all the way up to Deep Space Nine. Once you get to Deep Space Nine, you'll make this turn and you'll use your slipstream to get all the way down here to the bottom. Once you get to the bottom, I turn it off, make this turn manually generally, get up to this star here, and as soon as it's up again, boom, we'll hit it going up this way. If I'm about halfway there or so before that's off cooldown, I'll wait so I can use it on this last just straight stretch, just in case if I activate it here and I screw up and I end up out of the way, I won't have any kind of uh, you know saving grace or anything left to, to use to get me to the end there. Um, so that's just kind of a quick overview on kind of how I run this. You'll have to play with it and it's going to take a little bit of practice, but it's not super difficult. Again, we'll, we'll see how I do. It's been months since I've ran it myself, so um, we'll... Uh, how that turns out with uh, with this route and with the build that I got. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in and run tour the galaxy and see how we do. All right, we have finished Tour of the Galaxy. Let's take a look at how we did. And uh, right off the bat, I will characterize that run as total doo-doo. Uh, so I missed some stars. I flew in a complete circle on uh, one part of that. It was pretty, uh, pretty embarrassing. I considered redoing it, but um, the fact that we still finished it, I think says a lot for um, you know, the ship and the core. I mean, and, and again, it's not like some magical thing I've put together that's super special or anything like that. It's just that with those basic items, uh, even with screwing up as badly as I did, I was able to complete that run. And that netted us 925,000 credits for a 15 minute run. In the past, when I was doing it all the time, I have been able to complete that with a couple minutes to spare as well. So once you get a little bit of practice there, um, but again, even as you can see, I mean, there was a lot of that. It just wasn't lined up real well. My timing was bad. And at one point my ship got stuck in a turn after it was on a station and I just turned in a big circle. Um, so I, you know, I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm pretty surprised that we still finished that with, you know, 20, 30 seconds to, uh, to, to spare there. Uh, even at the end of that, um, my um, it was one of the rep ranks or something like that had popped up and slotted that mission as being my primary. So the uh, I had a little confusion for the last system I needed to go to because it wasn't lit up anymore. Luckily, I've done it enough to where I remembered exactly where it was. But in any case, uh, total crap run, uh, and we still finished it and netted almost a million credits just from that. Uh, so I might have undershot uh, my statement there on the title of the video of the the million credits in 20 minutes but in any case um very good so there's our 925,000 credits for tour the galaxy uh next let's take a look at the patrol that i like to do um so uh what i like to do is the ninth rule it's uh pretty easy um the big thing is at the end you just get wave after wave after wave 
And so the more enemies you're killing in that, the more loot that's going to drop. Um, so here's the ninth rule under patrols. And what you want to do is you want to change the difficulty in the game down to normal. And if I could click the right helpful. So I set it at normal. This isn't, you know, a do all the damage you can and that kind of thing. What we're doing right now is we're grinding credits. So drop this down to normal. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to be in a build that is uh, is a multi-target build, right? And so cannon scatter volley or a fire at will build, which is what, what this guy is here. And um, what you'll want to do, and, and you'll see as I'm running it is, you know, you'll take out the, the, the first enemies um, and then you'll get to that end bit where you tractor beam the ship over to the circle. You want to kind of head around to the back of the circle. So you're, you're kind of set up to be right behind the enemy when they're warping in. So you're in perfect position just to hit them all at once, take them down as quickly as possible. If you're in a ship that has flanking, that helps, you know, even more. And so what we're, what we're wanting to do is get as many waves to come in as possible. The more waves, the more enemies, the more enemies you kill, the more loot drops you get. And then what we're going to do is we're going to collect all of those loot drops at the end, and we're going to take it over to a vendor to turn those in. Let's go ahead and, uh, and take a look at that. And I think what we'll do is we'll jump over to Deep Space Nine so, uh, to turn those in. There is a couple different vendors uh, that you can use that actually pay more than uh, just recycling it or other ones. So this guy down here, um, our girl, um, they pay more. There's also up in uh, where the weapons are sold, the ground weapons. Let's run over there and we'll just point her out. Uh, they're going to give you on average on an item, say like, um, I don't know, it's some kind of ship equipment uh, core, let's just say at whatever the rank. I was looking earlier and I was getting 9,000 if I just recycled it or from another vendor and from her, I was getting about 12,000. So it's not a ton, but that adds up when you're, you're dropping all that loot in. Um, also, you can recycle this. Say you don't want to have to keep coming here. You can just open up your inventory and you can go to replicate and recycle and you can uh, sell your items uh, right from here as well. But you're going to get more money if you go see her, uh, the, the person over in the shipyard. Um, there's a place on Kronos. I'm not exactly sure where that is, but there's also one on DS9 um, that um, everybody can use. It doesn't matter what faction you're on. Um, so when we get done with this, we'll jump over there and we'll sell the stuff to that vendor and, um, and see what we get. Let's go ahead and run that ninth rule. All right, let's take a look at how we did. Got a good amount of vendor trash here. Um, 
I like to use this particular vendor. Not all vendors give you the same amount. Um, so this one here will give you a little bit more for each item. It's not a ton, but it adds up over time. Uh, I believe there's another one down at the uh, in the shipyard on Deep Space Nine. There's one in the uh, shipyard. Um, I think there's a wiki for that of which ones are which. I'll try and look that up. But if you're on Fed, um, use uh, use her. If you're not, what I'll do is I'll jump over to DS9 in just a moment and I'll show you where that is because all factions can use that vendor there. In fact, why don't we go ahead and, and do that? So if you're on her space dock, go ahead and use uh, this lady right here to sell your stuff to and if you're any other faction or you happen to be over at deep space nine um you can use the one over there so let, let's go ahead and hop over there so we can take a look at that okay here we are on deep space nine if we head over to the shipyard area so we can check um there are these guys kind of hidden throughout the whole game here. So if you open your inventory, you can go uh, open replicator and replicate, or recycle, I'm sorry. And you can actually just sell this stuff right here anywhere you want to. Um, so let's just look, this engine is 9,931. And let's see how much the vendor here will give us for it. So when you go to the vendor, just pick any of these, like you're gonna buy something, it'll pull up a similar interface screen there and you're gonna go sell. And you see we get 12,414, about 300 more. So definitely uh, worth seeking out uh, one of these vendors here and uh, make sure you don't sell anything um, <laughs> that you want to keep. If you do on accident, you can click on uh, buyback. Double check this when you sell if you're, you know, just want to make sure. Because as soon as you change instances, buybacks will no longer be available to you anymore. So make sure that you're you're checking what you have, maybe organize out your inventory before you fill it with the vendor trash uh, so you don't accidentally you know sell something you don't want, change instances, and then you're out of luck. I like to have my inventory up to see things kind of disappear. We got 221,000 and some change for that. Run took us right about five minutes. So in approximately 20 minutes or so, uh, not counting you know travel time, things like that, uh, we ended up making 1,146,678 EC. Not a bad haul for uh, 20 minutes or so of your time. Uh, if you do that every day when you log in. If you're playing five days a week, that's five million plus like I said, there, there are other ways to earn. Um, you'll get EC from your endeavors and, and different kinds of drops and things like that. And as you're just playing the game, pick up loot. Um, so you log on, you do this run, this is your guaranteed million or so for the day. And then you go on to play your missions or your TFOs, grab any of the loot that you can and sell that as well. You should easily, you know, in just an hour or so of playing, be able to make, you know, in, in between, I would say 1.5 and 2 million a day. Um, so, I mean, it's not huge, huge money, but that'll add up over time. You know, if you're saving for particular things, um, you know, up quite a bit of EC to buy the stuff that you want in the game, um, you know, in not so long period of time. If you're disciplined and you're not spending it, um, you know, in a month's worth of time, I mean, you could easily, you know, end up with, you know, almost a hundred million, no problem. Um, and that's without putting just tons of effort in. If you do have multiple tunes and you have a bank, a uh, shared account bank, you could run that tour of the galaxy, do this on each of those tunes. So say you put an hour into it every other day, um, you know, there's, there's 3 million a day across three tunes. Um, if you don't have an account bank, if you have a friend you can trust, you can give them the money and then they can give it to your other tune. So it's all on one. Um, account bank's kind of a big deal. I definitely recommend, you know, getting that. So that's one of the things, you know, I think it's definitely worth spending money on because it allows you to take multiple tunes and, and be able to pool together the resources across your account for, you know, different things, individual tunes. So, uh, definitely recommend doing that. 
Um, I think that covers all of it. So it's just the two basic, real easy to do. Uh, most people have been playing the game. They're familiar with this. A lot of them will use crafting and other means to, to make EC. And we'll, we'll do some videos on some of the, the other methods. But this is just a really easy method. Anybody can do it. The parts, you know, in order to do Tour of the Galaxy are pretty easy to get. It doesn't take a whole ton of work. And it's free of charge, um, IRL money. So um, definitely, you know, real basic, but real good ways to end, uh, to earn that that EC for you. So uh, I hope that was helpful, guys. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, go ahead and throw those below. Again, if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate if you hit the button, ring the bell. That helps me out quite a bit. And until next time, guys, have a good one. Stay safe, and thank you for watching.